The magnetic field is the shape formed by iron filings in the presence of a magnet. An electric current through a metal wire produces a magnetic field just like a permanent magnet. Using Michael Snyder's pick to mag app to plot contours of equal magnetic field strength. You can find this at pick2mag.com. These magnetic, quote, isopotential lines are perpendicular to the magnetic field. A close-up of the magnetic field and isopotential lines. The magnetic field lines can be thought of as many smaller magnets surrounding a bigger magnet. The isopotential lines are perpendicular to the magnetic field. Fractal Woman illustrates the magnetic isopotentials by measuring the voltage or electric pressure around a magnet. Magnetic isopotentials can be thought of as pressure gradients. Each dot represents a 0 0.06 volt reading at a distance from the magnet. Fractal Woman's voltage readings match the isopotentials plotted from Michael Snyder's pick to mag software. The isopotential lines are actually 3D surfaces. The 0.6 and 0.7 volt readings are shown. Pressure gradient equals change in pressure over a distance. In the case of air pressure, large pressure gradients have closer isopotentials and strong winds are expected. Small pressure gradients have more spread out isopotential lines and weak winds are expected. Likewise for a magnet, large pressure gradients have closer isopotential lines and strong flow is expected. Small pressure gradients have more spread out isopotential lines and weak flow is expected. Magnetic flux equals ether flow? Question mark. Fractal Woman demonstrates magnetic isopotentials on a level table. The table is perfectly level. A small magnet tends to roll along its current magnetic isopotential line towards the bigger magnet. Even placing the tiny magnet at the left can make it go to the right while going along its current isopotential. The small magnets have their own isopotential lines. The small magnets follow the path of least resistance. Tiny magnet still wants to align with an isopotential line even if pushed forward towards the bigger magnet. Tiny magnets tend to move along isopotential lines even when the large magnet is placed on its side before then flying to the poles. When placed really close, the tiny magnet flies directly to the pole of the larger magnet. Tiny magnet or steel ball bearing can be placed at the side of the larger magnet, but it is unstable. Slightly tapping the tiny magnet causes it to fly to the poles.
Magnetic isopotentials show the unstable configuration. Any slight deviation from the perfect balance will cause the small magnet to fly to the pole of the larger magnet. The stern gerlach experiment involves a beam of electrically neutral silver atoms moving through a non-uniform magnetic field. Individual atoms are deflected either upwards or downwards, but never in the middle. The mainstream explanation is the silver atom's unpaired electron is either spin up or spin down. From the perspective of magnetic isopotential lines, the silver atoms behave like a tiny magnet passing through a large magnet. The tiny magnet exits along an isopotential line either up or down. When stacking many magnets together, the magnetic strength is much weaker in the middle and much stronger at the sides. But I can easily move it, see? Easily move it. But when it gets to the end, I cannot move it. <laughs> I can no longer move it. It holds the whole string up by holding the ball. Okay? Visualizing the isopotential lines in 3D. When viewed from the poles, the isopotential lines form concentric circles. Faraday's paradox explained, rotating magnet does not induce a voltage at the poles because the isopotentials don't change at the poles. Spinning the copper disc induces voltage because the isopotential lines or pressure gradients of the moving electric charges changes in space relative to the concentric isopotential lines of the spinning magnet. Faraday's paradox can be visualized using a magnet and iron filings. Moving the magnet moves the iron filings. However, rotating the magnet has no effect on the iron filings. Atomic orbitals are regions around an atom's nucleus where there is a high probability of finding an electron. The orbitals may have different energy levels and shapes, yet all of which match the isopotentials of corresponding configurations of magnets. Perhaps the magnetic isopotential lines should be called the magnetic field instead of the magnetic flux or flow lines.